The race team send NASCAR an important message. Rodney Childers says he's sticking around. And Denny Hamlin takes a shot at the Martinsville grandfather clock. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Happy Friday. About to hitch a ride on the podcast party bus to Darlington Raceway, Sunday morning, 10.15 a.m. in the NASCAR Fan Experience. You can come meet me, some of your other favorite YouTube creators. BJ McLeod will be there. Can't wait to see you all at Darlington. Before we get to all the news, though, this episode is sponsored by my friends at Hampton Farms. High in protein grown right here in the USA, Hampton Farms is a family-owned company that, like NASCAR, car is celebrating their 75th anniversary. Summer is almost here. People love Hampton Farms peanuts because they bring a, a sense of nostalgia. Fun outdoor activities, baseball season. You can find Hampton Farms peanuts in the produce section of your local grocery store. You can also get nutty with Hampton Farms on social media. Follow Hampton Farms peanuts on Instagram and TikTok. Really appreciate Hampton Farms sponsoring this episode of Out of the Group. Be sure to give them a try. The first NASCAR story I saw this morning was actually a tweet from Rodney Childers last night. Rodney Childers is Kevin Harvick's Cup Series crew chief, and he appeared to confirm that he will not retire at the end of this season. A fan asked, hey Rodney, are you calling it quits after this season? I think you still have a lot left in the tank. And Rodney Childers replied, still going, looking forward to it. That sounds to me like Rodney Childers is sticking around, even though Kevin Harvick won't be his driver, but I assume he'll still be with Stuart Haas Racing. Actually, you know what? I shouldn't assume that. I don't know what Rodney Childers' contract looks like. If he is a free agent, I imagine he will be a highly sought after free agent, considering that even in down years for Stuart Haas Racing, he has Kevin Harvick top five in points. Last year, they won two races. Rodney Childers is extremely valuable to that team. And that's kind of my point. We talk all the time about Kevin Harvick, how great Kevin Harvick is, how he's managed to keep Stuart Haas Racing relevant, afloat these past few years. But not enough is said, in my opinion, about Rodney Childers. Before SHR, remember Rodney Childers was with Michael Waltrip Racing. He managed to squeak out wins with David Rudiman, Brian Vickers, Mark Martin, spoken very highly of Rodney Childers, both then and now. Kevin Harvick had a great career going, sure, but when he and Rodney Childers hooked up in 2014, they took off. Kevin Harvick is retiring at the end of this year. Losing Kevin Harvick is going to hurt Stuart Haas Racing, but the possibility of losing Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers in the same season would make things even harder. Again, we don't know if Rodney Childers will stay with Stuart Haas Racing, but assuming he does, having Childers there is at least a stopgap between Kevin Harvick and, you know, say Josh Berry or whoever they put in the four car would be huge. Getting that driver up to speed with an established veteran crew chief. Maybe they move him over to someone like Chase Briscoe, who obviously Stuart Haas and Ford value very highly as well. Maybe they move some things around like how they moved Chad Knauss off of Jimmy over to William Byron for the end of Chad's career. That might have helped with Byron's development. I can't imagine it hurt it. Maybe as HR does something like that, no matter the case, if they can keep Rodney Childers around even for another year or two, that would be extremely important. Losing Childers and Harvick at the same time whew, would put Stuart Haas even further behind than they appear to be right now. Anyway, next story I want to react to. Yesterday, North Wilkesboro Speedway revealed the trophy for next week. Yeah, wow, it's next week. Next week's all-star race and Check it out, it's beautiful. A beautiful, shiny replica of an old moonshine still. Very fitting, the theming is perfect. Wilkes County, legends like Junior Johnson, very, very fitting. And very elaborate too. I don't know exactly how big this thing is, but it, I mean, it kind of looks like a handful. It almost looks like you could actually operate it. <laughs> NASCAR bringing the Cup Series back to North Wilkesboro Speedway is supposed to be a love letter to stock car racing's roots, some of its oldest and most loyal fans, and I think this trophy does a good job encompassing that. Not everyone was impressed though. Denny Hamlin always has to be a naysayer, always has to play devil's advocate. Denny Hamlin tweeted this, oh man, I'm about to get dragged. Totally unpopular opinion incoming. Is this a trophy or a piece of art? Does it say winner anywhere on it? Date? I love cool, unique trophies, but feel like they should look like trophies. I'll pause right there for a moment. Man, Denny Hamlin's always gotta be a contrarian, but I get what he's saying. He's not insulting the trophy. He calls it a work of art, which it is. It's beautiful, looks super duper cool, but 
you know, in his defense, I get what Hamlin's saying. It doesn't really look like a trophy. That's sort of become a thing in the past 20, 25 years in NASCAR, where a lot of trophies don't really look like trophies. Like, sure, you have trophies like Bristol, which, oh man, that still looks like a great old school trophy. Darlington this weekend, yeah, that's a trophy. The Daytona 500, yeah, I'd consider that a trophy. But for every single one of those, you have a trophy like the Clash this year, which, yeah, that looks cool, but at the same time, it doesn't really look like a trophy to me. It's just like a display. Or better example, would be trophies like this year's United Rentals 500 trophy. I mean, that's literally a scissor lift. <laughs> Again, it looks kind of cool, but it does not scream trophy. I, I do think we should get back to the more traditional gold, silver, cup style. I understand the sponsors want to put their branding all over it, but you know, I get what Hamlin is saying. Trophies, by and large, should look like trophies, and not all trophies in NASCAR accomplish that. But Denny Hamlin continued, and I didn't like this last shot that seemingly came out of nowhere. Hamlin tweeted, now for my kill shot. Martinsville clock isn't that prestigious to me. Why? You can buy one from the store right down the road. Only two of my clocks actually have any writing on them saying, signifying they were one. It's just a clock that families of means owned about 40 years ago. Feel free to drag me below. And yeah, some fans, of course, did drag Denny Hamlin. I, I think his point makes sense. He's obviously self-aware. He understands this is an unpopular opinion. I feel like that line about, you know, oh, Martinsville clock isn't that prestigious to me. You could have deleted that line and still made your point. That, that's all I'm saying. I don't think Denny Hamlin is wrong necessarily, but boy, he always has to go out of his way to capture the headlines, huh? I saved the behind the scenes political stuff for the very end, but this is a very important story. Jenna Fryer of the Associated Press wrote this morning that the owners of the 16 NASCAR Cup Series chartered teams wrote a letter to NASCAR's board of directors earlier this month requesting meaningful dialogue regarding the franchise model system, the charter system. There's a link to the full article down in the description below. I encourage you to go check it out, but uh, I'll highlight some key bullet points. According to the Associated Press, this letter acknowledges that talks with NASCAR have been productive and that the two sides have tentatively agreed on a new economic split of the next media rights deal. However, in this letter, the teams once again reiterate that their acceptance of this new economic split is dependent on making the charter system permanent. That's basically it in a nutshell. Apparently this letter was sent just like last week. Jim France, Steve Phelps, some of NASCAR's key executives have begun meeting with individual teams. That is the latest information. We know where NASCAR stands more or less and we know where the teams stand. The team's reasoning is not that hard to comprehend. Like we know why the teams want the charter system to become permanent. It protects their investment. It's a security. If you're a team owner and things you know, go south for your company or if you just wanna pull out of racing for whatever reason, thanks to charters, you now have a valuable asset that you can sell to potentially make most of, if not all of your money back. So I get why existing team owners would want that system to be made permanent. Why is Jim France especially, because I think last month there was a report that Jim France is completely against making charters permanent. Why? I imagine NASCAR likes having the charter system as a bargaining chip. Right now the race teams, largely through the Race Team Alliance, are more organized than they've probably ever been. They have a louder voice in negotiations than they've probably ever had before. Making the charter system permanent would only give the teams even more power. NASCAR is likely wary of that. I imagine Jim France and NASCAR like working in eight to 10 year intervals in case things change. What if at some point they do feel the need to tweak part of the charter system? Something needs to be fixed. If you're constantly renewing the charter agreement every eight to 10 years, then during that renewal period, during those negotiations, potentially you could make those changes. If you make the charter system permanent, the only way you're probably changing anything is through lawsuits, probably spending a lot of money in legal fees, hurt feelings, I don't know, it'd be a mess. So I don't really know where I come down on this. I think as a fan, it's very easy to side with the teams over the big bad corporate NASCAR. But in this case, I'm not sure it's quite that simple. I like that it sounds as though the teams will be getting a larger split of the media rights revenue. I think that's a good thing. I think the teams, the drivers, the cars, the crews, those are the stars. That's who the fans care the most about. That's who they want to see. So yes, they should get a larger split, I believe. The charter system though, to give Jim France some credit, you know, it is flawed. 
I wonder if there are some aspects of the charter system that could be made permanent, you know, maybe so the teams don't have to worry about NASCAR one day just scrapping the whole system and, you know, these charters becoming worthless. Maybe there could be some leeway still for NASCAR to tweak certain elements of the charter system every eight or 10 years. Maybe that's possible. Maybe that's not. Maybe we can get the best of both worlds. Maybe we can't. I'm just just brainstorming here. I don't know what's possible, but it sounds like there's still a ton of work to be done. Right now you have two extremes. Charters have to be permanent. Charters won't be permanent under any circumstances. I think at some point they're gonna have to meet in the middle or one side's gonna be extremely unhappy. Or, no, I don't even wanna go there at this point. It is still too early. Time is ticking, but it's still too early to fear the worst, uh, in my opinion. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Whose side do you come down on? Do you kinda understand both? That's where I am. I understand both. I'm not in these meetings. I don't know the exact dollars and cents. I think it'd be really hard to take charters away, but I also understand NASCAR's perspective, not wanting to make them permanent in case down the line, some tweaks to the system may need to be implemented. I don't know, tough to say. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. That is gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you love all things NASCAR, you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued and very generous support. See you guys at Darlington, all aboard the podcast party bus. 10, 15 a.m. Sunday morning, meet up at the NASCAR fan experience. We'll be around during the day. I know that's very early, so we'll probably be around later in the day as well just lurk in somewhere so stay tuned on all of our social media to see where you can find us sunday afternoon sunday morning all day sunday gonna be awesome i love darlington i love throwback weekend and it's awesome to be a part of the team have an actual car more or less in the race that's a dream come true really appreciate the support i will see you there have a wonderful weekend folks